Hi, I'm Rafe. Welcome to this edition of Introduction to Comics, where our focus is going to be on the, the anatomy of the comic book. Uh, in talking to a lot of newcomers to the world of comics, I've discovered that many people have trouble even knowing how to read the comic and, and what to focus on. So I want to walk you through the parts of the comic book. So we're going to start by looking at the cover of a comic. And what we have here is a modern comic. This is Dr. Voodoo, Avenger of the Supernatural. Uh, and looking at this cover, we have a couple features that I want to point out. In the upper left-hand corner is the issue number, uh, which is fairly important when it comes to buying comics and knowing the order in which to read them. Here we have the title, which is, of course, always on the cover. Um, this can cause problems when it comes time to uh, cataloging and collecting because oftentimes the full title isn't exactly clear or it can and or it can be confusing so here's an example of what could be a confusing title uh, it's Marvel 2-in-1 presents Thing and Ghost Rider well to the to the newcomer to the uninitiated they would probably just assume that this is called the Thing and Ghost Rider However, the official title is Marvel 2-in-1, and I'll show you how to distinguish that once we get to the interior of the book. Most of the comics you'll encounter will have some sort of image on the cover. Uh, here we have the protagonist of the book, Dr. Voodoo, with his staff raised in the air and magic emanating from his hand. Um, this is fairly common. However, there have been exceptions. Um, typically, in the modern age and from the Silver Age on, uh, comic covers will feature at least a representation of the action contained within the book. This is a cover to Thor 258 where we see Thor in battle with the Grey Gargoyle who has turned all of Thor's uh, teammates to stone and he has the Lady Sif as a statue raised above his head about to throw her off the ship. Um, this scene does appear in the book and, as I said, this was fairly common um, in the Silver Age on to, to depict the action that happens in the book. However, if we jump back to the Golden Age, which would be comics from 1939 until about 1956, we can look at a book like All Flash number 27, where Flash is shown as a giant looking over this tugboat where a couple of guys are fishing a, a criminal out of the water. This scene doesn't appear in the book, probably won't appear in the book. Covers were not related to the action contained in the books back in the Golden Age. Moving back to our modern comic example, Dr. Voodoo, uh, one final feature that I would like to draw your attention to is in the lower left-hand corner. Here we see a list of the creators of the comic. The credits appear on the cover. Uh, the comic industry has become increasingly creator-centric. Uh, people buy comics based on who's creating them and less so because of the characters who are in the comic. Moving to the interior of the book, this is the first page of Thor. Um, it used to be that every comic started with a splash page, a full page image that either depicted the action to come or started the story itself. Uh, this was intended to, to grab the reader and, and get things going. In modern days, however, comics have loosened that up a bit. This, for example, is the first page of Dr. Voodoo. We get the action started, however, it's over the course of several different panels. Now that's probably a term that I should pause and explain. A comic book page is made up of several different pictures, unless, of course, it's a splash page. Each of those individual pictures is typically contained within a box. So looking at this page from an Archie comic, this is the original art, uh, this image of Reggie that's contained in a box is considered a panel. A page is made up of several panels. Now, we'll come back to this page, but I want to go back to the splash page first. Now the reason I wanted to come back to this first page from Thor is I wanted to point out a couple of other features that typically appear in the first couple pages of a comic. Now if we look at the top of this page, you can see the credits of the creators. We also get a brief introduction to the character. 
Now in modern days, uh, Marvel Comics has started to actually include a synopsis of the story to this point, as opposed to just a little bit on the origin of the character, which is very helpful for new readers. At the bottom of this page, you have the publication information. Now this has also moved around in modern ages, in the modern age. Um, a lot of times you'll find this at the end of the comic. But looking at this fine print, you can see such things as the title, Thor, is the official title. It's not the Mighty Thor, as it says on the cover. Moving back to the Archie comic, um, this is a typical interior page from a comic made up of six panels. In addressing the, com the question, how do I read a comic? You know, you read a comic like you, you would read a book. You go left to right, top to bottom. Starting in the top left, we've got Reggie saying he'll accept any challenge. We then move to the right. Veronica comes up with a challenge. Moving down and across and down and across. It's really fairly simple on a page of this nature. This is a page from Thor. It's fairly simple, fairly straightforward. You go left to right, top to bottom, but you have the long panel on the left-hand side. Now one thing I do want to point out about this and the previous page, all of the action is contained within the panel. Nothing spills out of the panel. Um, even if we look at the lower right-hand panel, which is the most action-packed of these panels, uh, the motion lines here stop at the edge of the panel and then restart as they come back. This is another convention that is broken regularly. Jack Kirby broke it all the time. Looking at this page from the Will Eisner book, The Building, uh, you can see that you're still basically reading from left to right, top to bottom. However, once you get down into this lower area of the page, things become a bit jumbled. Um, you know, you don't really know what to read first. Uh, should I go here or here? Uh, he does help us a little by having his protagonist of the story uh, running from one scene to the other, but he's got everything overlapping. It makes it a little more challenging. However, as you look at the design of the page as a whole, Eisner does a great job of helping the reader to figure out what to read and when to read it. One final feature of comics that I would like to draw your attention to, um, and this isn't one that is as prevalent anymore as it once was, but back in the golden age and up until roughly the 80s, uh, the U.S. Postal Service insisted that comics have at least two pages of text to qualify as periodicals or magazines, which gave them a lower shipping rate. Um, and I suppose that's still the thing. Uh, in the 80s, comics went to a different form of distribution, and as a result, they were allowed to ignore this regulation. For a time, in the golden age, the comics would feature a, a text piece, a, a short story, um, but eventually they realized that they could save money and promote uh, a sense of community with the readers with this feature here, the letters page. Uh, letters would, uh, readers would write in, editors would respond, there would be correspondence between readers through the letters pages, and it, it gave them a sense of, of community. These have almost entirely disappeared from comics. You can still find them in a few, but with the uh, advent of message boards and uh, chat rooms and what have you, the, the need for community through letters pages has almost been wiped out. So, there you have your first introduction to comics, uh, the an anatomy of a comic book. I hope this helps you uh, learn how to read them, what to look for as you read them, and to enjoy them. I'll see you next time when we look at collecting comics.